This is the business news of Georgia and the world in English on TV3. I am Nugzaru Khaza. How do you do? Georgia has a new president. On October the 27th, on national scale, almost 1,700,000 voters participated in presidential elections, which makes almost 47% of registered electorate. Our compatriots who live abroad proved to be rather passive voters. A little over 3,500 of them took part in the elections, which amounts to 7.5% of total number of election participants who voted for their chosen candidate, Georgi Margelashvili, philosopher by profession, candidate of political coalition, Georgian Dream, was elected the fourth president of Georgia in the presidential elections of 2013. International organizations and observer missions acknowledged the results of elections and assessed the process as one more step towards democracy in Georgia. In three weeks after the elections, the space in front of the old building of Parliament in Tbilisi will become the venue of main political event. The fourth president of Georgia will take the oath in front of the former parliament building. The expenses connected with new president's inauguration will be specified shortly. According to Nodar Khaduri, Minister of Finance of Georgia, they have set up a special commission which will calculate the inauguration expenses. The finance minister says that in view of the fact that President's Reserve Fund is used up, the Georgian government will have to cover the inauguration and overhead expenses. List of the guests invited to the inauguration ceremony will come to public knowledge in the nearest future. In the words of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Georgia, Special Commission is working on the issues of inauguration, which will make up the list of invited guests. At the first post-election press conference, President-elect Georgi Margvelashvili declared that serious work will have to be carried out in the sphere of the country's economy. How would the elections that were conducted against the background of stable environment affect the development of Georgian economy? According to the assessment of the Vice President of the Chamber of Co Commerce, and industry positive tendencies of last year's parliamentary elections continue. They have already influenced economic activities. He believes that the eliminated doubts regarding democratic institutions in Georgia will promote investments on part of foreign as well as local investors. Presidential election was one more step towards democracy. It contributed to the improvement of investment environment, making it attractive for local as well as foreign investors. Emzar Jgeranaya, professor of Tbilisi State University, thinks that political stability is directly connected with the growth of investments. He believes that the factor of peaceful and democratic presidential elections eliminated the main obstruction that was constraining the economic processes. Meanwhile, Pata Shashalidze, president of New Economic School, considers that the factor that promotes business development is not just democratically performed elections, but mostly the newly formed economic liberties and scaled down economic regulations. Representatives of International Monetary Fund touched upon the serious influence of political processes on economic situation. One of its key recommendations has been the elimination of political risks. The fund touched upon the serious influence of political processes on economic situation. One of its key recommendations has been the elimination of political risks. At the joint press conference of Georgia's president-elect and the country's prime minister, Bidzina Ivanishvili talked about the new premises for the theater of music and drama, 
which is under a prolonged construction on the territory of Riche. Building of the theater that began during the tenure of Mikhail Saakashvili is currently suspended due to the absence of related finances in the budget. Minister of Culture told our TV that there is an alternative understanding of either continuing the construction or moving the theater in question to another more suitable place. It is the work of a famous Italian architect, Fuchs. I think they choose the wrong location for it. Such buildings need bigger space. At the Union of Architecture, they argue that building of the theater on Riche began without its coordination, without the public. Architect Giorgi Epiani insists that the drawbacks of the project are its wrong placement and absence of recreation zone for the theater. Meanwhile, Nana Tsomaya, chairperson of the Commission of Architectural Ethics, raises the problems connected with the breach of our national cultural heritage and project appraisal norms. The Riche Theater, outlined by the Italian architect, is designed for only 500 spectators. 75 million lares was already spent on the first stage of its construction. Completion of the Riche Theater's construction was originally scheduled by 2012. A new 200 million investment in energy sector. Minister of Energy Kaha Kaladze and Director of South African Company signed a memorandum of intent on building hydroelectric power stations cascade on the Tehura River. According to the minister, the memorandum envisages realization of project feasibility study. The company undertakes to complete the research in 18 months. For this, it will follow it up with specific procedures connected with construction works. The project foresees building of four hydroelectric power stations. Minister of Finance declared that the government follows up its promise to liberalize the tax system. According to Nodar Khaduri, the minister will be deprived of the right to interpret the law. At the same time, the taxation body intends to cut down the time of examining the documentation. As of 2017, the Internal Revenue Service will be allowed to examine only the information pertaining to the last three years. In the rating of doing business 2014, Georgia moved up by one step and took the eighth place instead of the ninth. Better than nothing, huh? At the same time, among 189 countries, Georgia holds the first place regarding the property registration. In the sad rating, South Korea outruns and Norway follows Georgia. Among the post-Soviet countries, Georgia is number one by this rating. Armenia is on the 37th place. Russia, the 92nd. And Azerbaijan, the 70th. The leaders of the rating are Singapore, Hong Kong, and New Zealand. Russian telecommunications company MTC answered Prime Minister Bizina Ivanishvili's statement in the letter addressed exclusively to TV3. At the press conference, the Georgian Prime Minister declared that his government could sue the Russian telecommunications giant. Ivanishvili backed up his claim by the fact that MTC practically proclaims the region distanced by only 200 meters from the occupation line as the territory of the Russian Federation. MTC categorically rejects the fact that it owns stations on the territories of Abkhazeti and the so-called South Ossetia. However, it makes no comment on the issue of Georgian government's intended suit against MTC. At the Georgian Ministries of Foreign Affairs and Reintegration, they say that the case is under consideration in the words of Pata Zakarishvili, unlike the previous Georgian administration, the current government will give fitting rebuff 
to such actions of Russian companies. By all means, we'll view the action of this company in the light of legislation, and appropriate administrative bodies of Georgia will take fitting measures. Meanwhile, Prime Minister's personal envoy for the relations with Russia says that he will make specified statements only after he studies the case in detail. A few years ago, Communications Regulatory Commission of Georgia introduced sanctions against Russian company Megaphone and imposed on it a fine of one million lares. However, those sanctions produced no effect on the company that was functioning on the occupied territories. At the Regulatory Commission, they say that they will impose sanctions against MTC as well. Though they are not sure how effective their sanctions will be, MTC is one of the biggest telecommunications companies throughout the entire CIS, Commonwealth of Independent States. Besides the CIS member countries, it serves Transnistria and Nagorno-Karabakh. In the occupied Abkhazeti, they beat three ethnic Georgians with truncheons and kept them locked up for eight hours. The chairperson of non-governmental organization displaced women for their rights in forms. According to Nona Ubilava, three residents of the Okumi village of the Gali region were detained. When they were crossing the so-called border, they beat them and released them after they paid 200 rubles, 2,000 rubles, sorry. Chairperson of the non-governmental organization addressed the Euro-Union monitoring mission and the Ministry of Reintegration and requested their adequate response. On behalf of Georgian troops stationed in Afghanistan under the International Security Assistance Force mission, officers of Georgian armed forces handed the state banner of Georgia to Prime Minister Bizina Ivanishvili. The banner was waving at the Georgian base in Afghanistan. Bizina Ivanishvili hosted Colonel Malchaz Merlani, chief of the 3rd Infantry Brigade, and Colonel Alexandre Kiknadze, deputy chief of training and military education at the state chancellery. Minister of Defense Irakli Alassania attended the ceremony. Underwater tunnel that will connect Asia to Europe is the vision of the 19th century. The Turkish Sultan Ottoman Abdul Hamid's dream came true in the 21st century. The Turkish government completed this grandiose project. Japan and European Investment Fund assisted Turkey in realization of the project. The new station is called Marmari, which means sea and rails. In the expert opinion, it will be swift and safe. Prime Ministers of Turkey and Japan attended the ceremony of its inauguration. It will link Europe and the Asian part of Istanbul. East train will have to cover 76 kilometers, out of which it will travel 14 kilometers underwater along the seismically active Bosphorus Strait. The tunnel is designed to withstand a nine-point intensity earthquake. This is the grandiose project which was realized thanks to our joint effort. This underwater tunnel will connect Europe and Asia. God willing, will establish direct communication with many countries of the world. The train will pass the strait in four minutes. Turkish population welcomes the project. They believe that it will improve their life. As they say, trains will move by two-minute intervals and they will carry 75,000 passengers per hour. Construction of historic tunnel began in 2004 and it cost 4 billion United States dollars. And finally, our correspondent Kota Mosidze offers you his very, very sweet piece of reporting. No doubt chocolate is a very popular dessert used all over the world and its production is a very lucrative business anywhere you go. 
In Georgia, chocolate production has a long history. In the 90s of last century, Georgian chocolate disappeared from markets and it was substituted by the chocolate made in foreign countries. It was very tough to restart chocolate production in Georgia, but the Georgian confectioners have coped with the difficult job quite successfully. We can see the chocolate from Belgium called Rosalie on the Georgian market. This company gets premium class raw materials from the leading Belgium chocolate company. Rosalie also produces chocolates for kids and for diabetics. Chocolate company Rosalie has contract with the partners from Azerbaijan, so we are able to sell our product outside Georgia. The most difficult part of our business is selling our product. Georgian customer is used to the low price chocolate, but as you know, we have relatively high price than our competitors have, and this is because of our high quality product. Our chocolate is distinguished from the other ones because it contains 100% pure chocolate. We produce black, milk chocolate and even chocolate for those who fast. The story of chocolate dates back at least to third millennium. It has originated in Central and South America. Chocolate has spread all over Europe from Spain. At first, chocolate was kind of soft drink but eventually it was developed into various chocolate products. Different nations added different flavors to it, but the main raw material remained the same, the cacao tree grains. Chocolate was regarded as the drink of gods and it is loaded with lots of calories, thus bearing strengthening effects. Another good feature of chocolate is that it makes human mind work better and reinforces our immunity. When we are in a bad mood, chocolate might help. It will not make us completely happy, but it will definitely make us feel better. This is at least what serious dietitians are telling us persistently. On the other hand, the self-same dietitians are warning us against excessive use of chocolate. Well, sweet tooth might not be a very good thing to have, but those sweets definitely make money in Georgia, which is certainly sweet enough to keep going. That's all today. Thank you so much for watching the business news of Georgia and the world in English on TV3. I am Nogzaru Khadze.